Okay, well, uh, we are presenting uh, the design and validation of a two-phase gravity-driven microscale thermosiphon. This is the thermosiphon that we had, so first we need to do the setup preparation. Our setup contains of a Vertex uh, 7 and has a thermal paste on top. We can connect the thermosiphon on top of it and then we need to uh, connect these two guys that are inlet and outlet of uh, uh, water. So uh, this is the flow meter here uh, to control the amount of water that comes in and uh, goes out. And also we have a filter here. This is the filter. This is the filter that takes the impurity out of the uh, thermosiphon. So what we do here is that we use a uh, thermal stress test on top of Vertex uh, 7. So we first uh, load the uh, thermal stress test and when it starts then we see that the temperature at different parts of uh, thermosiphon starts to go up. So basically we have four thermocouples connected to different parts and the one that we, up, we can follow is the riser one. The one it, which is here, so it's a riser one. So when the temperature goes up, still we need to wait until the two phase starts. So after the uh, required amount of heat is absorbed by the refrigerant in the evaporator side, we see that uh, there is a uh, drop from uh, something like 30 to 33 degrees to 30 degrees. So the temperature of riser goes up and then the two phase starts, which is basically here. Exactly here. So you see that the temperature is going down because it's when the two phase has started. So when the two phase starts, uh, uh, the temperature of the chip uh, is under control. So the temperature goes down until uh, the uh, two phase is star starts to stabilize, and from then we have stabilized temperature on uh, the chip uh, too. Other things that uh, are worth to show is that uh, we need to monitor the temperature of uh, the riser if we want to make sure it, the thermosiphon is working well. At the same time, we can keep track of the temperature of the uh, chip. So this thermosiphon basically was designed for uh, 65 uh, watts over a chip of uh, 5 by 5 centimeter. So that's because it's working based on the amount of heat flux. Uh, as I said, we are using uh, Vertex 7, but any kind of uh, other chips like CPUs uh, could be used. Uh, however, we should uh, take care of uh, the amount of power and maybe we need to redesign it if uh, uh, there is excessive uh, increase in the power. So, as I said, it was designed for 65. However, our validation showed that uh, it can also control up to 120 watts, uh, which is uh, basically good. So, uh, the metric that we want to uh, actually evaluate our effectiveness is a power usage effectiveness. So the amount of power that we are using for this cooling is uh, only to keep uh, uh, this amount of water here, which is very, very little amount of water cooled down. Uh, it comes from a thermal bath here that we can set the temperature to whatever we want. Uh, this is one of the uh, user-defined uh, parameters that we can easily use it for different uh, applications. And uh, to cool down this amount of power, uh, we need to uh, consume very, very uh, little amount of power. And then it means that uh, 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 the power usage effectiveness uh, of our work is uh, close to the optimal one. For the current prototype, we reach uh, power usage effectiveness of 1.03.